Hello, here we are. In this video, I'm going to attempt to take this three-dimensional toy train and put it into my computer somehow. Eh, not really. Um, and and the, the topic here is that I want to, uh, this is in my WebGL 3D P5JS series, I want to look at load model. So what if I had a file on my computer that had all the geometry for a train in it or anything else? So you might know about 3D modeling. Maybe you use some type of 3D authoring environment to create your own 3D miles. Mo mo um, models. This little piece just fell off. Um, maybe you you go to a website and you found somebody else's 3D model to download. But what there are lots of different file formats. So that's sort of the question. But the file format that you want to look for to import a 3D model into P5 is OBJ. Let's go over the computer and, and see what happens. All right. So on this computer, I already have a file called train.obj. Thank you to Bram for uh, helping me find this file. Bram in the patron group. Uh, I'm going to, I'm actually, let's look at this file. Look at this. So this was originally made in Rhino. That's like a comment. And look at all this stuff. That's actually what's in a 3D model. It's just V, all of these vertices. These are all the X, Y, Z coordinates. So you can make your own geometry algorithmically with primitive 3D shapes or begin shape, vertex, end shape. But here's a file format that has a lot of vertices in it already. That's, I love looking at that. So how do I get that into P5? Well, I still have a kitten in this. Let's leave the kitten here. Just maybe we'll see what happens with that. I'm going to make a variable called train. And in preload, I'm going to say train equals load model. So the load model function is just like load image, loads image data, load JSON, loads JSON data, load mile, model, loads a three-dimensional model. And there's no reason why I couldn't replace now box with drawing that model, which is with the function model train. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, I failed here. <laughs> what went wrong? Uncaught, maximum call site, render GL, flatten. Hmm, hmm. Okay, so I have figured out why this broke. And unfortunately, it broke because that model that I'm loading, the train model, is actually quite a complex one. There's no reason why it can't work. And it, it, could, it, it should at some point work. There's actually, a, a, at the time of this recording, there is a GitHub issue on the P5JS repo. So if you're watching this in the future, go and check this. Maybe it's been resolved. But the way that I fixed it right now is I just reverted to an earlier version of P5. The version that I'm now running is 0.5.14. So let's now. I have this ready, and I'm going to hit refresh. <gasps> There's the train spinning. There's my 3D model train. Now, interestingly enough, why is it spinning like a crazy thing? Let's go and put the box back in. Let's add the box as well. Now you can sort of see what's going on. The, so one thing that's important when you're importing a model is, well, what is it, the model's own internal coordinate system? And in this case, this model that I happen to import, it is not centered itself around 0, 0. And this is going to make it much harder for me to use. I could do like some kind of offset, like manually, like maybe I could figure it out. I could say something like, hmm, right before I draw the model, let me translate like maybe negative 200 or like 100 along the x-axis. Uh, that went. That's closer. Let me try like negative 200. Oh, that got, that got further away, so maybe it's not that. So I could, start, I could try to debug and figure this out, but what instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to revise, or perhaps uh, Alka, uh, Alka has already done this for me. Uh, Alka in the chat uh, has revised the model to center around zero. So hold on for a second. I'll be right back with a magical new model. OK, I'm back. And I'm going to change. I now have a new OBJ file, train corrected. We can look at it, actually. It might be worth just taking a peek at it, because we can see, look at these numbers now. They look more like they're smaller and there's some negative ones, so maybe it's actually centered around 0, 0. Um, so let's try this model. Let's go back and load it. And we can see, oh, OK, well, that box is still there. So the train is now stuck inside the box. Let's actually, uh, um, let's. Um, get rid of the box, and let's, there we go. So there's the train. Ah, so what should I do? Now, 
I, hopefully this is like an open source model off the like the source, but I, I'm gonna post this code. Hopefully now everyone watching can make some goofy like 3D animations with smoke coming out of the train or that sort of thing. But let's let's try to just experiment with this a little more. So for example, uh, what if I just have the ambient light have some color? So you can see that this model is going to uh, respond to the light. Um, what if I were to give it a different material? Like, what if I try specular material? That's white. Right, can you see, does that look different? I can't really tell. So did that material apply? I don't know. Let's see a normal material. Let's give it a normal material, which is that debug rainbow color. Yeah, so the material, uh, normal material is certainly applying. It's unclear to me whether the specular one did or it's just hard to see. So you can see that that's working. And I don't see any reason why I couldn't texture the train. <laughs> Let's try that. Oh my goodness, it's the kitty cat train. <laughs> All aboard the kitty cat train. Meow, meow, meow. Sorry. You know, I have to try I, I, some attempt to make these videos more interesting. It's mostly failed attempts, but. Um, so you can see this actually like the P5 somehow decided it would texture this in some uh, arbitrary way. So wonderful. So um, I, I, I could do more with this. I would love to, you know, figure out how to make the train move and then have some smoke come out of it. Maybe the smoke could be spheres with cloudy textures or something like that. But I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise. Now you can see that in addition to making geometry with your own primitive shapes, you can also load a model from an OBJ file. And something I still haven't shown you, which I do intend to do, is how to make a custom piece of geometry using begin shape and end shape. Thanks very much.